Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to look at Enso OS. So this OS claims to be an environmentally friendly green OS. We are going to ex evaluate these. So we're looking at, you know, clearly a, uh, you know, computer screen designed more to look like a little bit of a Mac-y type feel. We have, uh, f looks like Firefox back here running with Akosia, right? Akosia saves the planet, things like that. Uh, apparently, allegedly, if you um, do uh, do an internet search with Akosia, they plant a tree. Uh, this is basically a reskinned Ubuntu uh, LTS with things heavily borrowed from elementary. Now, it's technically it's a skin of Zubuntu, so it's XF Ubuntu XFCE with a lot of things from elementary. So definitely interested. Uh, they do have their uh, support stuff from the coffee. We can go ahead to the download link. And if we head on over to the download link, it's going to pop us up our download. We have a single, um, a single uh, download, which is definitely one of the things that I want to mention here because it's a single download. This is based on Ubuntu 1804 with their marketing here, a simple operating system for everyone able to run on any machine. Not if you're running Ubuntu 18 because they dropped 32-bit support. You only have one download option. It does not have 32-bit support. Now, I am in agreement with, sure, it's maybe about time to phase out 32-bit support for computers because there's not a lot of computers in the world running 32-bit right now. Uh, there are several that are capable of it, but most systems are capable of 64-bit. And, uh, but, but the fill, if you wanted to say, Hey, this is a green operating system to revitalize your old computer, pick something that can be used with more older machines. You know, I mean, that's the thing. So they say simple design with simplicity in mind, keeping the design and system to a minimum to enable you to run the tasks you need, uh, private, no spyware included and never will be. Um, I do not know if this has, uh, I don't believe it has the census data collection, but we can check to see if that is installed or not. Um, and green built on Linux. And so is able to run on nearly any machine that exists, including those that are no longer supported by windows and Mac. Again, to make that statement, you need to be able to offer more 32 bit support. So I'm already calling a little bit of bogus here on this. I'm wondering if they're just trying to pick up on the whole green, let's get environmental friendly and things like that. So we have a separate reader, we have a desktop, we have a multitasking view, an applications menu, we have Plank. And then we do have the download button. We have some installation, so the installation documents are, are pretty good as well. So if you want to head on over and look at the installation, they really walk you through all of the different steps. Here's how to get everything prepped up in Etcher. So, you know, if you have a uh, Windows, I think, does Etcher have um, Mac support as well? I don't know, I don't use Etcher. Uh, but uh, they do have the instructions about how to, how to test it out, how to install it, walking through the entire installation screen. So they, they do have a lot of really good uh, basic support here on the installation um, about learning how to use it. You know, here's the applications menu, which this layout's actually different than what they give you out of the box. So that's kind of an interesting thing. And so we'll look at that. Or maybe maybe there's two of them and I've just been using the other one. I don't know. We have a search bar. We have the categories. We have a plank doc. Uh, they're talking about how to add and remove pinned, <clears throat> pinned areas. There's so, you know, installation center. Again, I didn't see this one. They have the... Um, they have the, uh, it's called App Pick, I think, and I forget where App Pick comes from. This is a picture of GNOME software. And so there's a little bit of inconsistency in what I actually got and downloaded and what is in their documentation. So that's a little bit of, uh, of some interesting things to keep in mind here as well. So we're going to go ahead and boot up the system and... Uh, so let's go ahead and jump on over. It will boot pretty quick. Um, it is based on XFCE, which on the my current build of VirtualBox does not save your 
uh, it does not save the screen resolution. So we're gonna have to fix the screen resolution when we get in here. That's uh, not an issue with the distro. That's an XFCE thing on the newer version and on the older VirtualBox. So we're not holding that against the system because that's uh, what I would expect to see. We have this nice animation, startup animation, which is pretty good. And we should jump here into a uh, boot screen in a second. So here is our login screen. So it does look pretty nice, uh, good, modern. Again, it is this small screen size here just because that's a new XFC, uh, uh, XFCE combined with my uh, older virtual machine. So we're just gonna go ahead and push a little fix for that. <sighs> Dang it, I wanted to show that welcome screen. That welcome screen is actually driving me crazy because I've not seen a way to turn it off and it pops up every single time. I mean, it might be here, I didn't find it. Every single time I've booted this system, and I've actually booted this more because I actually installed it, I installed all the updates, and I installed a couple applications so we can test how a Qt app and how a GTK app looks with the theming. Uh, that's one of the concerns, you know, you get something uh, with a lot of uh, stylistic things pulled from elementary, and we might get concerned with some of the theming. So let's go ahead and have a look. <clears throat> we have a edit the user details, which basically just pulls up your ability to edit your details there. Uh, we can change system settings. So loads up the XFCE settings panel. We can install applications, which gives us uh, this guy here. Uh, App Hive is the name. Um, I think I can't remember. I think I might have said that wrong, but I believe this is a different one. I think that they had the GNOME Software Center showed up on the uh, on the picture of the installing applications. Uh, so this guy here, I, I have found it to be fairly slow. Uh, it, it's like it's this giant JavaScript mess or something. You click on something and you can see how long it takes to go. I'd prefer it just kind of go, you know. Uh, but that's okay. And that's it. We don't have a way to turn off this welcome screen. So somewhere there should be a startup application. So um, let's see if I can find it. Session and startup. Somewhere I should be able to disable this. So I literally have to go in here and disable the start screen like that. No tips about how to do that. So that might begin to frustrate somebody who doesn't want to see the welcome screen every time you boot up. There's no option to turn it off and no instructions on how to do that. But that's something that we would kind of expect. Overall theming is nice. Of course, they are going for a sort of Mackie look, particularly if, if they would have centered our panel, then... Uh, that would have been a um, a better better way to make it look a lot more like a Mac uh, than they have. But the theming overall is pretty nice. Here's desktop settings, uh, system settings. It looks like we cannot work on the desktop if I wanted to. Uh, okay, I'm not sure. Apparently that's not working. So there was a panel up there that was in the panel and it crashed on me, so I don't know. Uh, here's our app hive, here's our system settings, gets us back to our system settings. Let's load up the desktop here. It's a variety of pictures, nice pictures overall. Here's the dock, we can go with big, small icon sizes. Um, don't send. So I'm getting some system crashes here. All right, so we can display it at the top or at the bottom for the dock. Um, all right, and like I said, the uh, the other thing that we saw a difference in what was on their website versus the system is this is actually the applications menu, which is again pulled from elementary. So this is what we have. You can click on the button here to get your lists versus this uh, this version of it here. So over here, um, we have mine, Sudoku installed. I installed GIMP, that's one of my test applications. I installed FileZilla. Um, I installed Disks, which should be up here somewhere. So I installed Disks, that wasn't installed on the system, and I installed VLC. So everything else, it gives us uh, mail reader. Is this, uh, what's which one is this? This is mail spring or genie. I don't know what mail reader is. Let's boot it up. 
Okay, so that's opening Thunderbird. I have no idea what male reader is. Okay, um, not seen that one before. There's Thunderbird there, of course. We have Transmission. We do have the Firefox, and we have the web browser. The uh, Is this Epiphany or the GNOME web browser? I'm not sure which one that one would be. Office Applications. We have Orange Calendar, Orange Global Time, Calendar, Preferences. Sound and video, again, I installed VLC. Let's have a look at our task manager here. Oh, so I clicked the, I clicked the, uh, the literally I clicked this web browser and it boots up Firefox. Okay, so I guess I have Firefox installed overall. All right, so let's see what we have. 11% of our memory. Um, so 11% of our memory, and that is, uh, we have six gigs in this guy, so not too bad on system resources. Um, no real issues there. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and we've looked at App Hive already. That's the multitasking view. And let's go ahead and have a look at, uh, okay, first, where's my file manager? Okay. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that this file manager comes to us. Oh, that's this is Thunar. Okay, I was expecting that to be a different file manager. Um, I thought I read something that the file manager was different, was not Thunar. Thunar is what I would expect with XFCE, but I read somewhere that they had a, a uh, different uh, different look. All right, so here's kind of what their applications look like. Let's go ahead and boot in. This thing's just behaving like a Mac up here. I think they've picked every, the worst elements of every operating system and threw them all into one. This is quite impressive. All right, here's the image viewer. Okay, so these are some built-in applications that we have here. Let's compare this now to, um, I installed GIMP is going to be one of our GTK uh, theming. So I want to see how the GTK theming looks. Does it, uh, how does it behave here? Okay, let's go with single window mode. All right, so the GTK theming does look pretty good. Everything is integrated very nicely. Again, with the top menus like an Apple. Why would you do that to yourself? All right, well, I guess if you like it, that's fine. And the other thing I actually installed for that is disks. So I'm expecting this to look perfect, all right. Um, although maybe your absolute purists will be bothered by the fact that this has a much larger uh, height on your menu. It doesn't bother me all that much, but some people might have an issue with that. All right, I installed two things for looking at our Qt apps, uh, VLC, and I installed FileZilla. So these are the two Qt apps that I installed. Again, both of them look just fine. So it looks like your theming across GTK QT is going to look uh, very good, very consistent overall. So I'm not really having any real uh, real issues with the theming, things like that. Um, it's not my cup of tea, but everything does work. It works well, and I kind of like it. So this raises the biggest question. Does Ecosia really plant trees? Really? They show us a picture of Ecosia on their picture in Firefox, and our default search is still Google. All right. Uh, do they really plant trees? Because a planting tree is an offset by energy usage in newbies. Uh, each search with Ecosia actually removes one kilogram of CO2 from the air, which makes Ecosia a carbon negative search engine. I'm going to, I'm going to call BS on that. Um, BS alarm, BS alarm, because that means if I sit here and do 35 searches through Ecosia today, which I'm not going to do, then they're going to plant 35 trees. I somehow lacked out that's happening. Okay. And so I, I don't know. Uh, so even if Ecosia was set as our default search, but it's not set as a default search. So what do we actually have here? Um, well, Here's my thoughts. Here's my thoughts. Do they meet their goal of being a green OS, save the planet, use Enzo? Absolutely not. I think that they're using the green and the environmentalism marketing as a way to bait and switch people into using their distribution. Now, the distribution itself is based on Ubuntu 18.04, so they cannot match the claim 
to work on nearly everything because 1804 has no 32-bit support and we do not have an option to download a 32-bit operating system, which is what most of the older computers that are no longer in Windows or Mac support are going to be running. And so they fail to being able to uh, they fail to being able to revitalize any old system. They're not actually running a Koja. There's nothing about this that's any more green. All we basically have is a Zubuntu rethemed with several elements out of elementary. My personally, it's not my cup of tea. I think it's harder to use, more ugly to use. That's a personal preference of mine. Overall, they completely fail at their claims. Now, is it a decent system? If you like the look, you like the way theming looks, you like the way a Mac runs, and you like the menuing, hey, it seems to work great. It has all the theming is intact. We looked at Qt, we looked at GTK applications. Everything seems to congeal nicely in the system. We didn't have any problems. Uh, I think there were that early bug, but eh, whatever. Uh, maybe that's something small and weird. So it is running lightweight. They have accomplished that. It, it does have very nice and compelling theming, especially for how lightweight it is. I will give it that. It is based on Ubuntu LTS. It fails to meet its claims of being environmentally sound, environmentally green. I'd rather send you somewhere like Peppermint that still has 32-bit support, or maybe Debian with still 32-bit support, or something else that doesn't look like it's borrowing the worst of all of the different theming UI elements from the different operating systems out there. That's my overall take on Enso OS. Uh, I'm not going to recommend it. I'm not going to tell you to stay away from it either. Um, it's just kind of there. Let me know what you think about this assessment of the distro in the comments down below.